what a joy it is to be with you all once again today. Uh, as both our pastors are up at the men's retreat, uh, I get to be here to share with you a wonderful message as we continue on through our series uh, of our fall emphasis called Teach Us to Pray. Where hopefully, uh, our hope is that as we go through each petition of the Lord's Prayer, uh, you're recognizing that not only is this prayer a command from Jesus to pray this way, but it's also a guide. And I hope that as we go through each of these petitions, uh, you're looking at your own prayer life and analyzing it and thinking uh, about how we do pray to God. So today we're going to be tackling the second petition, uh, specifically that of Thy Kingdom Come. But as we start this, I have a, a task for you. It's a little bit out of the comfort zone of church, I know. I'm going to ask you to talk to people. <laughs> so if you could turn to your neighbor here for just a minute or so and introduce yourself if you don't know them, and then I want you to ask each other this question. What is a king? So just take one minute and talk with each other uh, about that question. What is a king? Ready, go. Uh, Wakanda 
like uh, Black Panther. Or maybe if you're like me, you love Lord of the Rings, you think of uh, some fantasy kings like there. We have these pictures, these images of what a king is. But for me, this past week, as I really looked at our text at Psalm 47, and I searched the scripture, I realized about myself, I have a hard time picturing myself living under a king. We live in a, a republic, right? America is a democracy. We don't have a king. So as I really thought about it, I don't know what it must be like to live under a king. But the more I thought about it, the more I prayed, the more I realized that that's not really true. That I do live under a king. And I want to show you a video clip right now that kind of describes the two kings that are present in our world. A little more about the one true king. I think 
and that's true of all of us. Whenever we're told, here's how we're supposed to act, here's how we're supposed to live, we rebel. That's the other king. That's Satan trying to reign in our lives. We want our own independence. We want to do what we want to do. If you will, turn in your Bibles now to Psalm 47. We're going to spend the, the rest of our, our time now in this message uh, really diving into the Psalm. So if, if you have a few Bibles in front of you, please open those up to Psalm 47. Uh, if you have your, your, your home Bible with you, great. Or if it's on your, your phone, that's fantastic as well. So look with me now at verse 1 that we read a little bit earlier. It says, Clap your hands, all people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. We need to clap for church, I think. Good. There you go. Very good. Thank you. Because we, we need to rejoice. God is an amazing God. And here we have this song that they're praising what he has done for them. The Israelites are praising God because they've been rescued from some other nations. And now we continue on in verse 2. And I think if you have a highlighter, highlight verse 2. Because as I study this text, this seems to be the key verse of this song. Look what it says here. It says, For the Lord the Most High is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. I'm not a, a Hebrew scholar, but I know a guy. And I, I work with him and I work with some other uh, uh, some software to look at the Hebrew text of this. And I discovered two really interesting things. Uh, the first, the terminology of the Hebrew here, of the Lord Most High, is Yahweh Elion. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right or not. But as we learned last week, hallowed be thy name. That God's name is, is holy. And it is special. And it's powerful. Here, once again, we see that name of God, the great I Am, Yahweh, used. But then it's also used with this next name, Elion, as we translate most high. But that word in the Hebrew is used every single time the Israelites are talking to not just the Israelites, but to all people, to foreigners who might be living in their land. They're declaring that God is a God of all people. And then he says, is to be feared. And for me, that begs the question, what does this mean? What does it mean to fear God? Well, we let Scripture interpret Scripture. We go to Proverbs, where we have in Proverbs 111 verse 10 and in Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding for his praise endures forever. The fear of the Lord is the understanding and the knowledge that God is God. He is the king. And I looked again to where this phrase fear of the Lord comes up and it comes up again in Ecclesiastes which is a great book full of meaningless nothingness. The whole point of Ecclesiastes is that the writer is trying to discover what is the meaning of life. And after the whole book, he gets to this conclusion in Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. Having heard it all, this is the conclusion. Fear God and keep his commands, because this applies to everyone. The fear of the Lord is for everyone. God is for everyone. He is the King of kings. Let's look back there at Psalm 47, verses 5 through 8, where it says, God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of the earth. Sing praises with a song. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. In this second petition of the Lord's Prayer, uh, Martin Luther's explanation, he declares that surely God's kingdom comes without our prayers. But in this prayer, we ask Him to come to us also. We ask for God to come to the world. For all people to know that He is, he is God. This song, this song was written to not just the Israelites, but to all of you. All of us, because the king is the king of kings. He's the king of the whole earth. Whole earth. Is he the king in your life? Are, are you trying to set yourself up as the king? Are you allowing Satan to rule in your life? 
or as God sitting on the throne in your life. I ask you this next week to think about this simple, simple point. Who is the ruler of your life? Is it the king of kings or is it Satan? Who is sitting on that throne? Jesus came proclaiming the good news that the kingdom of God is here. It has come. And it has come in the form of a man, Jesus Christ, born in a manger, who suffered and died on the cross for you and for me. So that that relationship between God and man might be restored and we can once again, as the video said, walk with the king. We can walk with him wherever we go. I think it's important to remember there are two kingdoms here. We have the kingdom that we live in right now that we are a part of, but we also have the eternal kingdom we are a part of with God. And that's the hope we look forward to is one day Jesus Christ will return and set up his kingdom on earth. So looking at the psalm, we might, you might think, well, it doesn't really apply to me. But I believe it does. Again in verse 2. For the Lord the Most High is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. This is written to you. God is your king. He is for everyone. God has selected you. He loves you. And he has called you so that his name might be proclaimed, so that his name will be revealed, so that his name will be followed. And that every single mention of his name, every tongue will confess and every knee will bow that he is Lord, the King of Kings. Amen.